Hi, it is Thursday, April 16th. It's Sarah, your friendly neighborhood prevention specialist. Uh, since it is Thursday, <clears throat> excuse me, that means that uh, it's time for a class for freshman to senior. I'm not going live today at one o'clock because I am doing a Zoom meeting with Grace Harbor Youth Works today, which I am really, really excited about. Okay, so today's topic is bystander intervention. And uh, we're gonna talk about what a bystander is, what an upstander is, and how to be a good upstander. Okay, so what is a bystander? A bystander is somebody who witnesses an event but is not necessarily part of that event. So for example, you are walking into Safeway and you see two people get in a fist fight in the parking lot. That is a bystander, basically, or you are a bystander. Basically, you are a witness to what is happening, uh, but you're not part of it. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a term called bystander effect, and that was coined uh, in the late 60s, I believe. What happened was there was this woman in New York City who was assaulted and murdered in between two buildings. And she was screaming like crazy, of course. Um, and um, nobody called the police, nobody did anything. Lots and lots of people in these, in these two buildings that she was between heard this and didn't do anything because everybody figured, oh, I'm sure somebody's called the police by now. I'm sure somebody has called for someone. I'm sure somebody's gonna go down and help her. So because everybody assumed that someone else would do it, uh, nobody did anything. And this woman ended up being murdered and it was just awful. So uh, professionals in harm reduction and human services thought, you know, maybe we should start talking about this and practicing this. Because a lot of times when we are a bystander to something, uh, it is it catches us by surprise. It's not something that we planned for during the day. So when you made your Safeway list, we'll go back to that example, uh, you weren't like, okay, we need bread, eggs, and I'm gonna try to break up a fist fight. Uh, <laughs> That wasn't part of your day. So um, we need to practice for things like this, uh, just like we have fire drills, um, so that we know what to do when we are confronted with a surprising situation. Uh, so that's what a bystander is. What is an upstander? An upstander is somebody who steps in and intervenes. They do something about the situation. Now you've got several choices that you can make. Um, and when I do this in classrooms, it's very participatory. Um, we have conversation and I put up these five cards. One says, talk to the victim, talk to the perpetrator, call for help, which means call a teacher or 911 or fire or, uh, you know, call, call somebody. Um, elicit help from those around you. So basically the people that are around you, you get help from them or do nothing. We included do nothing because even doing nothing, if you decide to do nothing, you've still made a choice. Um, not deciding is still deciding. And there's always something you can do, but you should never put yourself in harm's way. So on Google Classroom, um, you go to Google Classroom and you click join class and the code for today's class is H Y six U O V N. Okay, so, and I'll put that in the uh, comment descriptions, in the comments, uh, in the video descriptions. <laughs> doing good here on quarantine. Um, you know, that's a funny thing. None of us are doing this really, really well, and that's okay. Um, you know, we were, we're in a new world where we're doing things differently for a while, so that's all right. All right, back to bystanders. So um, there are things you can print out on that Google Classroom, and if you can't print it out, that's okay, because I'm gonna read it here. Um, but if you want to print out the material, you're more than welcome. Uh, the first one looks like this, a typical bystander um, and the ideal bystander. So we're gonna go through these. So a typical bystander goes through five stages when determining whether or not to act. First, you have to notice the situation. Oh, there's a fist fight in the parking lot. 
Uh, second, you have to interpret the situation as requiring intervention. Third, you assume responsibility for intervening. Four, know how to effectively help or decide how best to help. Um, this is another word, uh, con phrase for this is risk management. You figure out pretty quickly, okay, what do I need to do to help and also keep myself and other people safe? And then five is actually intervene. So you notice, interpret, assume responsibility, know how you're gonna help and then actually intervene in the situation. Um, again, this does not mean that you should risk your personal safety uh, and you don't need to become a vigilante. There are a range of actions that are appropriate and we'll go through those uh, depending on you and the risky situation at hand. So remember, if you're worried for the immediate safety of yourself and others, you can decide to leave the situation and seek outside help. That's still bystander intervention. Um, and don't forget about using non-confrontational approaches to break tension uh, by finding a way to insert yourself in the situation. Um, excuse me, I need to reach for that book, magazine. You've now created a, a bit of a distraction. I'm sorry, may I walk behind you? Excuse me, can I get past you? Uh, create confusion through distraction. Cause a mini scene by dropping something. These are just a few tips that are on this paper. Um, and again, we'll go through more um, more things that you can do to be a good upstander. So the ideal bystander approaches everyone as a friend, is honest and direct whenever possible, tries to de-escalate the situation before it becomes a crisis, avoids using violence as a means of intervention. Violence is not going to solve violence. It's not going to solve non-violence. It's just not going to solve things. Uh, refrains from antagonizing or accusatory actions when possible. Um, asks for help when others from others when needed, and knows when to call for professional assistance like um, EMTs, police, so on. So uh, let's go through some of those intervention strategies. There's addressing the aggressor. So you could use I statements. Um, so you can state the feeling, name the behavior, and show the person how you want them to respond. So an I statement would be uh, like, I feel upset when you make fun of my best friend. I would like you to stop. That's very direct. Um, and you've addressed the aggressor. You've told them it bothers you. You can even tell them why. Because my best friend is a great person who doesn't deserve this, just like your best friend doesn't deserve that. Um, another intervention strategy, the silent stare. Moms are good at this one. Y'all know that, you know that look that your mom or your grandma or somebody gets, that, that look, they look at you and you know. And sometimes just making aggressive eye contact with somebody, um, you know, I see you, I see what you're doing there. Um, that can be very effective. Humor. This is my favorite one on the list. It's, uh, humor is not always called for. However, if you are the funny kid, um, this is right in your wheelhouse, humor. Um, without being deprecating or putting people down, but using humor is a great way to diffuse the situation, getting people laughing. Um, I'm reading from my notes here. Bring it home. Um, make it, so making it about, about them or someone they care about. So, in the scope of my work, for example, I work at Beyond Survival, which is the sexual assault resource clinic for Grace Harbor, Washington. So, um, if you hear somebody make a rape joke or um, victim blame someone who has been sexually assaulted, you can bring it home to them in a way that's like, I hope nobody ever talks that way about your sister or your mother or your brother or your cousin, somebody that they care about. I hope nobody ever says that. I hope nobody ever thinks that's funny if something like that happened to you or your family. Get them thinking, oh, maybe it's not so funny. Um, and that's letting people know your personal value system. If, if that's in your personal value system, I have a great sense of humor, but I'm utterly humorless about rape. I don't think it's funny in any tech, in any tense, in any space. So people know that about me, so they don't tell me those jokes. Um, 
but it, it gets it, it gets that empathy going like oh yeah that would that would really stink um if somebody talked about my sister or my my brother that way um talking to people as a friend so this could look like i'm your friend right okay so that that wasn't cool and maybe don't address them directly in front of other people but pull them aside and talk to somebody as a friend distraction um we went through a few distraction tips there's a great video on youtube um if you go to youtube and put in the search bar potato chip subway guy so these two people are on a subway um i'm assuming in, in yeah it was in new york and they're fist fighting and they're kicking and punching each other and it's just nuts this man and this woman are in this physical fight and this guy breaks up the fight by just walking in between them and eating potato chips that's it he doesn't say anything he doesn't do anything in particular except he just walks between these two people and is eating chips it's hysterical so they stop fighting um the only mistake i think that the potato chip guy made is that he turned his back on one of the um one of the people that was fighting and he could have got clocked in the head but he just walks between them you know back and forth eating his chips he doesn't share his chips he doesn't say a word potato chip subway guy it went viral new yorkers went crazy they were like potato chip subway guy for mayor uh it was great so distraction can be great as long as you know that you're not going to get hurt uh recruit help so this means recruiting help from those around you so say you are um walking down the hall it's lunchtime you've got a couple of your friends with you and you see um a girl sexually harassing a boy you get your friends and you go over and you can be a distraction you can use humor you can do the silent stare you can address the aggressor there's all kinds of different things that you can do um to stop that to stop that behavior address the victim that's another thing you can do you can go over and pull the victim aside are you okay is everything all right uh would you like me to stay with you until help gets here and of course call for help again that could be a teacher a counselor um the police fire ambulance um uh any number of things so this lesson today isn't particularly long uh because we're here online um because when i'm in a classroom what i do is uh i have those five cards that i talked about and I put them around the room and then I give you guys different scenarios and you react to those uh, you choose a card sometimes I allow students to choose to just go in the middle of the class um, so th because maybe they have like a multi-layer approach um, and we go through scenarios some of the scenarios that we go through um, you're out in the woods at a party and you see a few guys trying to isolate a girl who's been drinking what do you do do you address the victim do you address the perpetrator or perpetrators do you call for help do you elicit help from people around you or do you do nothing uh, and then kids choose you guys choose what you how you think you would react and then we talk about that um, typically there's really no right or wrong answers um, and it's not up to me to challenge your belief systems or uh, anything like that. I just want you to think about how you would react because a lot of times we get in these situations and we think, I have no idea what I, you know, what I would do if I was in that situation. So to think about it, um, another scenario I give is you are in the library and you're studying. Um, you hear a couple kids talking about shooting up the school the next day and they sound serious. Um, you have to, you take this threat as a serious one what do you do and then of course like I said uh, people choose the cards a lot of times they go in the middle of the classroom because they have a multi-layered approach um, like I would go tell a teacher then I would call the police then you know uh, and so on so I want you to think about um, some scenarios maybe things that you 
we always think later, you know, oh, this is what I should have said, or this is how I should have reacted. Um, so think about some of those times where maybe you've been in the lunchroom and somebody's making fun of your best friend, or you're walking down the hall and somebody trips you because they think it's funny. Um, any number of things that um, you, uh, or trip somebody else because they think it's funny. So any number of times that you were a bystander to something, um, that you could have been an upstander to. Uh, maybe it's the middle of the night and you're awakened because you hear fighting from your next door neighbors. Um, so think about some of those scenarios. I would love to hear uh, in the comments. So in the comments below, please feel free to uh, drop in questions, you know, whatever. What I, I really love to hear as well are times that you went from bystander to upstander. Um, I was awakened in the middle of the night, my neighbors were fighting, I called the police, um, you know, they arrested the husband because he was beating up his wife, or, um, I saw a girl sexually harassing a guy in the hallway, and I reported it, um, to my Title IX person at my school. Uh, Title IX is the, so every school in, um, the nation has a Title IX um, policy. And what that is, is it's a sexual harassment policy that protects students and teachers from sexual harassment. Uh, and we can go into that more um, in another class. But so that that's what that means. If you're like, what the heck are you talking about? Um, anyway, so I would love to hear in the comments about times that you went from bystander to upstander. What did you do in a situation to help diffuse that situation? or get help or make sure that someone was safe or um, to stop bullying or something like that. Um, so let me know. I would love to hear it. Um, again, I will put in the description the Google Classroom code for the class if you want to print those materials off. If not, it's cool. We went through them. Um, so next Thursday, I will see you next Thursday. And uh, we are going to talk about trafficking next week. So that's kind of a heavy subject. Um, be ready for some heavy material, but we'll we'll do it and we'll get all the information. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you have a really wonderful weekend. Um, if you are in Western Washington, Grace Harbor particularly, it's supposed to be really nice today. And then um, it's supposed to start raining in a few days and rain for a while. It's spring, it's Western Washington. All right, you guys, I hope you have a super fantastic weekend. And remember, in the meantime, be kind and wash your hands. Bye-bye.